Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of Bullets Athletic Spotlights. I'm Jen Maurer, Assistant Director of Athletic Communications, and joining us today is head men's soccer coach Mark Metrick, who is entering his seventh season at the helm of the program. So, Mark, this has been a very unconventional season, obviously, and with March, the hit of COVID-19, the pandemic, and a lot of changes have happened since then. Unfortunately, one of them being able, not able, I should say, to play any games during the fall semester. There is the possibility of it happening in the spring, but ultimately, how has your team been doing with all these changes? Well, yeah, Jen, to be honest with you, obviously it's, it's been challenging because obviously we've been adapting to circumstances as we're going along here. I mean, uh, so it's very unique and, you know, and obviously, you know, in the, few years time people will look back and, and, and remember it very well because of its uniqueness right but uh, you know we're just trying to get on with it and it, you know what happens happens and we're trying to make the best of that and uh, yeah it's been difficult because you know we have a lot of new players in this class and obviously for our senior class it's extremely disappointing to lose a season we are hopeful we'll play in the spring I hope we can pick up games you know normally in the spring we'd only play uh, you know one game in an alumni game so you know, maybe we'd be allowed to play more, which would be great for us uh, to be able to do that. So, um, but, you know, in the bigger picture, we understand as well and we've just got to get on with it. You know, I mean, it's, a, you know, obviously a un unique time in the world and, and uh, you know, ho hopefully we'll put it behind us soon enough. But, uh, yeah, it it's been challenging, but we're getting on with it. Well, that's good. And I kind of want to bring up last season in 2019, what a one to remember. It was outstanding. You finished with a 12, eight and one mark overall, five, three and one in the Centennial Conference where you clinched the fifth seed in the Centennial Conference tournament. And then you guys made it onto semifinals. You guys earned an at-large bid into the NCAA Division Three tournament, winning the first round against 22nd ranked Oglethorpe University, a team who came into that game as the nation's second best scoring team. You guys shut them out 5 nothing. Go on and play Washington in Lee University and fall on a heartbreaking 3-2 to two loss. But that was the first time that men's soccer and the program at Gettysburg had advanced the second round since the 1998 season. So looking at the momentum and how well last season went for you guys, how are you keeping your team motivated heading in with the unknown? Wow. Um, so, yeah, uh, obviously, Jen, we know it was an exciting year last year, you know, and, you know, more than, you know, records and, and, and stuff like that. I, I think it was an enjoyable year because of the way we played. You know, I, I think we played an open style and, and we we're attacking style and we went after games. We scored a lot of goals. And, uh, you know, that's one of our things is we don't want to just, you know, focus just on winning alone. I, I think we want to play an exciting, you know, kind of a attractive style of soccer where people like to watch it and, you know, and we like to play it and uh, hopefully we're going to get good results from doing that. So I think last year was a culmination of prior years too to get to that point where, you know, we played an extremely tough schedule, which ultimately got us into the tournament because it was a strength of schedule that was like top five and uh, we were rewarded for, for playing that. So, uh, but yeah, for me, and I think the players too, I think they enjoyed the way we played last year. And, and I think that was, that was a great thing. And so now, obviously, I realise, and, you know, having been around a little bit is, uh, you know, what comes next? You know, like, you know, sometimes with success, you can get complacent a little bit, obviously, it's human nature. And does, you know, is there a dip? And that's really our biggest challenge, I think, is now trying to figure out what's next. And, you know, we did some good work last year, but now we have to do more good work. And, and maybe, you know, the goal is to always is going to be to leave the shirt in a better place. So what does that mean? So I think, you know, we're doing a, a you know, kind of a gradual discussion with our players about what the, really the challenge is and making sure we understand that. I think that's the first point. And, uh, and that's got to, at the end of the day, motivate us, uh, you know, to do our best and to try and improve the program and keep it going. So, uh, you know, it's kind of funny when you're on the journey of it. I mean, you know, in a way you could say that the journey from where we were five years ago when we started, you know, and the great memories from all those years, really, but we, we kind of built up to where we were last year. 
and you know that's kind of the enjoyable ride there now it gets really challenging in a way because you've got to keep that you know and, and keep that momentum going so I think as long as our players understand that and we, we've with experience explained that I think uh, you know we'll be up for that challenge so uh, I think that's the biggest thing we've got to deal with with that with the again the unknown of what the future holds for this school year so what are some of the maybe the expectations and the goals for the team for 2020 to 2021 uh, for 2020-21, well, you know, we have a big first year class, we have 12 players in it, so, uh, you know, now with the adjustments, obviously, you know, they're on campus, most of them, and so, obviously, trying to keep that group uh, together and uh, ultimately improving in terms of every in every way and improving the, the, the relationships with each other and getting together and I think we have a unique opportunity to really focus on that first year group and you know some of our international players so we would hope to really you know uh, cultivate that group to, to the point where at the end of this semester you know that group will be very very united um, and then you know, hopefully in the spring semester, we'll have uh, the upperclassmen back. So with hopefully some games, you know, we'll be able to focus on the way we play and what we're trying to do and, and get more into the soccer side of things. And obviously, we're hopeful to get back on the field this semester as well. And I, I do think, you know, if you look at it in a way, it's a, a unique opportunity to really get to know our first years, which we might not have got as well, you know, if we'd been playing a regular season. And uh, it was always going to be a young team this year because of the, the graduation of players and the influx of some new ones. So, uh, yeah, I'm kind of excited to talk to them and maybe we'll do some different things we've not done before and really try and, you know, develop that group into a very strong group, which we want it to be. Yeah, no, absolutely. You do have quite a large first-year class coming in for 2020 and speaking of that, obviously some of this, some of your players are on campus, some of them are off. So what has been a way to kind of keep everyone active and involved? Well, we, we, we had, you know, the reality was we did have 10 players that uh, didn't return to campus from our squad, you know, so they took a gap semester and are doing various things, you know. And I think that group, we, we, we were only, we we're not allowed to to have much contact with because they're not enrolled in college so in Gettysburg this fall so we're limited with that but you know one of our captains is involved in that group and keeping that group uh, together and keeping in touch with some of our guys on campus as well so that's important so really you know the main focus would be the, the, the group that was really upperclassmen on campus and the freshmen and uh, you know I, I don't want to over zoom them I think everybody's tired of zoom you know so I'm hopeful the next week we'll be able to get more interactive. Um, you know, so we, we, we do our, our once a week team meeting and stuff like that and talk about some different things. But, uh, you know, uh, again, I, I think I'm, you know, mostly I, I really realized during this period the importance of, I mean, it's okay to talk like this on a Zoom and with technology and, and the virtual world, but it's just not the same as making the interaction personally and how important that is for us as people. I, you know, I think I, yeah, and I'm sure a lot of people, they took that for granted and, and, and thought it was just a given, you know, but this pandemic has really shown me how, it, as people, we need to talk to each other and connect with each other, you know, in real life. So I'm, I'm looking forward to getting on with that. I feel like that we've missed that. And uh, that's an area that I think next week, I'm hoping we're going to get to that. Yeah, so now we're going to kind of switch it over to the personal side and asking you some questions here. And so, Mark, you grew up in England, came over to the United States to play college soccer at Hartwick. So how was that transition for you? Yeah, it was interesting. I mean, uh, you know, as an 18-year-old, so I've been in the United States a long time, uh, longer than I lived in England. But uh, I'm from a small uh, town out between Manchester and Sheffield in the county of Derbyshire in the Moors, so it's a country town, a uh, really nice area. Um, so yeah, I came to America, I landed at Newark Airport, which was a little shocking at the time, this was in the 80s, and I'm like, hmm. So I thought the university was in Newark, and I'm like, oh, you know, this is, looks a little bit rough. But uh, anyway, four hours later, I was in upstate New York, which is again a little surprising to me. I mean, remember, we didn't have internet or anything, so I didn't to be honest with you, I didn't even know which side of this country New York City was on. I, I had no idea. I knew nothing about America, really, except 
is an exciting place to go. So, uh, so I went to Hartwick College in Oneonta, New York, and uh, just had a wonderful experience where I could, ex you know, explore, you know, obviously my education and further that. Um, and I got a degree in physics, which is kind of weird. Uh, and then, you know, also pursue trying to be the best athlete I could be. And uh, we had a really good experience. I mean, that small uh, school has a tremendous soccer history. And uh, I was fortunate to be on a team that made the final four twice in Division One. Uh, we made the tournament every year. And uh, it was a fun era uh, in, in the 80s and, uh, you know, a special time. So transition, you know, certainly there was some, uh, I don't know, like even, I remember, I remember having a maths exam to gain entry into a maths class. And uh, they asked me, if you have five dimes and four nickels and three quarters, how much money do you have? And I had no idea. I got that wrong. Which obviously sounds dumb, but you know, I I had no idea what they were at the time because I'd just come over. So, uh, so yeah, so you know, uh, you know, it, it was great because again, for me, totally different experience, something I'd never done before, and uh, and around some really good people. So uh, enjoyed it tremendously, and that's why I'm in coaching today because really my experience in college was so good and so rich for me. I was hoping I could be involved in that again and help players be involved in those kind of memories as well. And at, yeah, you have continued to be in the soccer field. And so going back to your coaching side now, you've been at Gettysburg and have competed for six years. So what has been some shining moments for you? Well, you know, and I thought about this because I anticipated you might ask me that question, Jen, and the, um, it's difficult because, and again, it's gone quickly, but the truth of it is I've really enjoyed the climb. Like, like the, you know, that we, we, we did well the first year. It was a good group of guys that wanted to improve. And uh, I, I remember some of those games. Uh, you know, I remember, you know, in that early period going to Messiah and getting a draw up there. It was like a, it was like a battle where we got pounded, but we, we managed to find a way to get a result. I remember that. Uh, you know, and I remember the personalities involved in those games. I remember even early on, because we were, you know, we were looking to get credibility and get hopefully to a winning season and going down to Eastern Mennonite and winning 1-0, I think. Uh, but I remember many, I mean, you know, even the times, and I, I feel like if I, if I, I think every year there was, and it sounds a little bit political, but it, there were special moments in it, but, uh, you know, uh, I'm trying to think of other games, you know, there's some, I, I tell you, there's been some exciting games on Clark Field, you know, under those lights and it's dark and it's, you know, and I guess the way we've been trying to play and then intense and, and, and trying to be uh, uh, attacking orientated. I mean, we've had some fabulous games on there and, you know, I remember be, having a good result against Redlands. I remember, you know, uh, Haverford having great games there, Dickinson and just the electricity of the games and, and obviously, you know, we can look at last season as, a, as a really achieving something in terms of going to the tournament and progressing in it, right? And, and that's obviously special. And that was a, a, the group was just a fun group to work with and, uh, and an exciting team to, to, to coach. Uh, but even, you know, years before that, I remember we played FNM in the semi final. Uh, we lost 1 0, but we played really well. So that, so that was a good moment, too, you know. And it, I think obviously with, with our league being so competitive, I mean, What's great, amazing with our league is, you know, obviously we, we consider ourselves, you know, one of the top leagues in Division Three in soccer. Uh, you know, Swarthmore, who got in the tournament as well last year, you know, I think they were just outside of our conference playoffs, so in sixth place, and yet they went to like the final 16, which just tells you how competitive the league is. So, you know, uh, I think that's an exciting part of our continuing climb is you've got certainly FNM and Johns Hopkins in there. And I do remember beating Hopkins down there, uh, you know, in our overtime game, which was, was special too. Uh, but again, I, looking back, I, I think uh, it's been a really enjoyable climb and uh, with many good memories and some really great personalities. And, you know, some of the stories are exceptional. I mean, uh, you know, and I feel like not saying them all right now because it feels unfair, but, you know, in, you know, yeah, so I'll leave it at that. Yeah, and actually to mention too, there was four Centennial Conference teams that made it into the NCAA tournament this year, which I believe was the second time in conference history that four made it to, into the tournament, which speaks volumes of 
the conference that you guys play in. And so I'm going to switch it, the uh, transition a little bit again and just ask you. So we had a lot of time at home during quarantine. So was there any new habits or hobbies that you picked up during that time? Um, so I'm trying, you know, I, you know, I, I do, I have done in, you know, my career and life done a lot of soccer, obviously. So it's kind of a weird time. I mean, I still coach in club in Baltimore, so I'm, I'm doing that on, you know, twice a week and on weekends a little bit, uh, an under-16 Baltimore Union team. Um, I, you know, my daughter plays, obviously she's 16, so just going back to school, but we're all virtual. So, you know, we've been, you know, trying to, you know, keep Haley busy and, and doing things. So that's been a lot of stuff. I, my wife has insisted I've done a lot more landscaping than I've ever done before in my life. So I'm getting better at that. Um, you know, we do have board games and stuff because it's obviously like a lot of parents trying to avoid too much social media and TV because it can be a little bit uh, depressing sometimes. But yeah, so I, I'm still, I, I go fishing there. You know, this year I might get the chance to go uh, steelhead fishing, which is, I guess, um, I'm looking forward to that, which is up in uh, upstate New York with my old coach. So, you know, I used to fly fish a little bit. Sometimes I go out with him in the Catskill Mountains because it's it's obviously a big getaway. So I'm looking forward to doing that, you know, maybe later this year. Always in the season, I've never been able to do that. But it, I guess it's some steelhead is a combination of a rainbow and a salmon. So I'd like to pick it from time to time and catch one of them. So I'll, I'll be doing that hopefully in the next month. Uh, what else? Uh, that's it, really. Well, Mark, so you've been, again, at Gettysburg going into your seventh year. There's a lot of history, obviously, in Gettysburg and a lot of great restaurants to go to, the battlefield obviously being right there. What have been some of your favorite places to go or things to do right in town? Uh, well, I, you know, and I, I don't live in Gettysburg. You know, when we moved, I still live in Maryland uh, down here in Westminster. So, you know, I don't hang out that much at night in Gettysburg. But, uh, you know, when I get the opportunity, I certainly... Uh, like the Gary Owen pub, it's got like a nice shepherd's pie and, uh, and a beer in there. That's my, I do that when I can, and sometimes with alumni when they come through. So that's a, a favorite place to go. Um, you know, the battlefields, you know, I've done the bicycle ride with my wife and obviously a couple of jogs here and there. So it's obviously a, just a beautiful location. And I like when I do just get up there, one thing I didn't really realize is the sunsets up there are spectacular, you know. so. If ever I get an opportunity just to stay for those, it's kind of cool, like the orange and blue effect. And, uh, you know, I lived in Towson, Maryland before uh, here. So uh, that was a little different in terms of community, obviously a suburb of Baltimore. And, and you know, so it's been a change to come out in the country a little bit more. So, uh, yeah, so, you know, certainly, you know, just the town itself walking around, obviously it's busy and it's kind of interesting. I was there the other day in front of the Gettysburg Hotel doing some security stuff and just to watch people going around that circle is kind of interesting because I know it's not bike week, but there's a lot of bikers uh, that, that, that visit Gettysburg. So that's always interesting to see. And uh, yeah, it's it's kind of, it's a cool college town. So, uh, you know, the pub restaurant too, I've been to that one a few times. Yeah. So, and the subway, by the way, my, my, my colleagues would know that. I go to the subway a lot. Me and Al are best mates. Mark, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing some news and about your team and about you personally. And so I'm Jen Maurer signing off. And until next time, go Bullets.